Okay, here's the two uprights that are going to support the gantry. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of where I'm at with this. Uh, we ran, ran a channel down the middle there. Uh, nice wide dado all the way through. And I got this, which acts as a riser. The main gantry part is going to sit on top of this. And there's going to be a little bit of overhang. And we're going to have screws coming down from the top into this. And also screws coming into the back. There's also going to be uh, a back to this that rises up with another perpendicular piece to make it extremely rigid. Uh, just a word of caution, um, these things have to be fairly exact. Um, I mean, when they're together, it should be perfectly flush across the top, no deviation, 90 degrees across the whole thing. Um, of course, you can go ahead and shim it any way you want and I likely will, but uh, to, to be headed in the right direction, you certainly don't want to be off from the get-go here, so do what you need to do to get straightened up. Now, there's going to be a really long bolt coming through the top, two in each of these that are going to hold the gantry into it from the top to add uh, that type of support before they come in through the rear. So, I'm going to go ahead and just drill that stuff out now. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier before I put the back plate on here, and as you can see, I've got it marked uh, it's near the front because it, remember the, the gantry is going to stick out a little bit so I wanted to kind of have it in the center not just the center of this. The reason this doesn't go all the way out is you have to uh, allow room for that slide of the linear motion a little carriage to come across the bottom here so we can't have it the same thickness so that's why I'm putting in some really deep lag uh, bolts through this and then also support from the back. Alright, let's go ahead and get this drilled. I'm just taking this video to give you an idea of where I'm going with this. So I got the holes drilled in both of the uprights. And this is the big gantry part with the data that was cut into it a long time ago. And this just kind of sits on top of there like that. And of course both these backs are going to be flush and located in the right position. But I just want to give you a hint. Uh, when I was marking this out, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but uh, I did mark it here and I used you no know, marking gauge to line it up and I just went ahead and transferred that mark across this part here on both sides, both ends. That way when I go to drill the hole through the top, which is what's going to screw into this, I got that centered up. Now of course I'm going to leave the top here a larger hole so I can move this around and orient it as needed and just use the pressure of the lag screws to, to hold it in place along with the stuff that's going to go in the back. So these are going to sit on there like that and then the second part to this is uh, this piece here and really you just take a measurement from the top down to the bottom and that's this piece times two so this this single piece is for both sides and what I did was just cut it to the same width as this and I went ahead and just cut a little dado right down the middle using the table saw blade uh, right in the middle of the board just divided by two then divided by the curve took a scrap piece of wood laid it right here in the middle after I marked that and just went ahead and marked the lines right here which I don't know if you can make out on the video that's where I'm going to finish cutting this dado but really the way that this is going to work just picture this cut in half here it's going to bolt into the back of this piece and then we're going to have a reinforcement a triangle that gets glued into this dado here which makes everything super rigid I went ahead and finished up those dados right down the middle of that piece of wood and then I cut it in half. Now this height is the same height as if the gantry sits across from the top of that all the way to the bottom so it sits pretty flush and I got two pieces and then I decided um, originally I was going to go ahead and just put a piece of the scrap ply in there to, to add a perpendicular piece as a stiffener to this thing. So when, when that gantry sitting there it's going to stop it from being a little flex back and forth that way. But I got so much scrap wood laying around here, I might as well take advantage of that. So here's a piece of hardwood, came off another project, and um, it, was a, it was an apron for a table. But uh, what I'm going to do is just cut around it. So I got some waste right here and some waste on the other side. I'm just going to take it out the middle. I'll get a nice thick piece. Um, this is also thick stuff, 7 eighths. So I went ahead and I, I widened this uh, dado up too. And I'm just going to uh, plane this down to size so it'll fit in that dado and maybe make a little triangle or something and uh, get it glued in there. Get that done, we'll wrap this up and I'll show you what it looks like. I'm just going to cut off the waste on both sides.
came off the joiner in good practice after I do anything the side that I just ran through I always mark it somehow that way I want to run to the planer anyways this is 0 0.81 of an inch thick the dado I got cut into there right now is 0.766 yeah so I'm just going to go ahead and bring it over to the planer here and get this thing trimmed down the up on it, right? Got everything cut, ready to get this guy assembled. Uh, here's what the finished product looks like for that brace. I just went ahead and added to uh, 45 degree cuts on both sides. Uh, if you're curious how a dado should fit, if you haven't made one before, so I like to make mine. Uh, they go in there, just a nice tight, tight fit. You know, it shouldn't fall out of there. Um, before I go ahead and glue it up, I'll probably just sand the edge just a little bit. But that's that's how a dado should fit. So, anyways, the way that this is going to work is um, the easiest and best way to glue this guy up find a surface that you know is flat I'm going to stay off the cast iron here but this is my outfit or with my side table on the saw it's pretty flat um, and then I'm going to take both these pieces and put the glue on this only on both parts we're going to do a glue up at the same time and obviously the other one on the other side I'm going to take this and I might just go ahead and shoot a few brads in here just to keep it in place so the glue doesn't want to move around. When you put pressure to glue in wood, it has a tendency to want to wiggle out of there. So if you shoot a few brads in there, uh, you'll be all right. You'll hold it in place for the setup. And then we're just going to push them together. I'm going to come ahead and clamp on the bottom on both sides. Parallel clamp, pull it together nice and tight. I'm going to come up here on the top and clamp this together nice and tight as well. Let that sit for about a half hour. It's not going to move. Um, I will probably go back and put some screws in after the fact. Once it's uh, gonna, after it's dried, I'm not going to mess with it right now. Um, but this is a critical piece. You don't want this coming off. All right, it's not going to come off. This glue is stronger than the wood. But uh, it, you know, you right here, it's critical in this glue up that you get a really good squeeze out and um, make sure that this wood is pressed against the back of this board really good. I went ahead and sanded this down so it's nice and uh, ready to take the glue and uh, that's it. Once it dries I'm going to paint this, put it together and I'm not going to touch it again. That's it. I'm done with this stuff. After this we're going to go ahead and get the gantry put on and then this thing is going to come together get the z-axis on and we're going to create the router mount. I'll show you how to do that. And here it is being glued just sitting and drying. I just wanted to show you. I did add one more clamp over here. The, the parallel clamp wasn't long enough to reach across the whole side and it was um, I just didn't like the way that, that I like to have equal pressure on both sides. So I just added one more clamp. But uh, you can see here that the glue is squeezed out which is exactly what you wanted. You don't want to put too little glue. It's a fine balance between too much too little. I just went ahead and wiped it up as it came out. Uh, be sure when you're wiping it up that you're not wiping across the boards. You do not want to glue these two boards together. Um, just pay attention to that and uh, wipe up as much glue as you can. Let it sit. After that, uh, it wasn't very clear. Obviously, these pieces don't go in yet. They're going to go in after the fact. We'll glue those up next.